Hey everyone, Hoka Athlete and coach at Higher Running, Sage Kennedy here with another training talk. I believe this is episode number 51. Thanks for all your questions last week. Of course, we have the Kipchoge analysis, uh, but also before that, running hilly marathon courses. Well, going with the top vote question, great question about heart rate training, but also holding a relative heart rate number or percentage of your maximum, maybe during a long distance race like a marathon or ultra marathon or even a half marathon, 5K, 10K. So the question is, I've run a few marathons and halves and noticed my heart rate is quite high at both distances. I've averaged over 92% for the marathon and higher during halves. What does this say about me as a runner? Am I at my limits? My max heart rate is quite is a quite accurate number gained through years of running and using a premium chest strap monitor. I train to heart rate and stay within zones, but when racing I I pace to mostly feel. My reference, uh, for reference, my halftime is 76 minutes and full is two hours and 42 minutes. So congratulations, great times. Those are fast times. Uh, the half marathon time is actually relatively better than the marathon time in terms of all out PR. So I would say, no, you are not at your limits. Uh, someone who could run a 76 minute half marathon, 116, ideally could train hopefully up to the level where they could put two maybe 80 minute halves back to back and actually run a uh, 240. So there is potential there. It does depend on genetics though. And genetics also determine your heart rate numbers because they are all relative, right? We don't go, I've done a lot of talks on heart rate. You could check them out on the playlist, how to determine your max heart rate more accurately, but also why heart rate's not the best thing to go to. And, you know, I'll start off with a little example before we get into it. But yesterday I went for a run, typical flat bike path run out here in Salida. I'm at altitude. Uh, I wear a chest strap monitor sometimes. I was wearing it. It was tripping crazy errors. Uh, you can't believe it. People say, oh, you're, it was crazy. Your heart rate went from 70 beats per minute to 170 beats per minute. Did you, you know, start sprinting up a hill? No, I did not. I was holding a pretty steady pace, running pretty easy, zone two type of effort. And uh, it was just haywire. And it, a lot of times there's heart rate monitor error, whether you have an optical wrist strap and it's genetic, some of it's genetic as well, right? Uh, how well your heart, the electrical signal from the heart, how well it's, it's conducting to the sensors on a chest strap monitor, what the moisture is. Some people lather up with, with uh, getting their heart rate strap wet. It generally works better when it's warm and you're sweating and there's a good connection there. But you know, if it's dry and windy and cold, maybe it doesn't connect well. Maybe it has to do with the tension of your wrist strap or your heart rate strap. Maybe it has to do with interference from other electrical signals. Uh, for whatever reason, maybe my heart's just beating weird because of my pulmonary issues. Uh, probably not, though. It was, it was just reading a really too low number, really too high number. I can't take that average and be like, oh, this was accurate because I know it wasn't. I wasn't breathing hard. My heart rate wasn't spiking without me knowing it. Sometimes people's heart rate could go hay haywire if they have a, a heart issue, heart flutter, uh, you know, arrhythmias, uh, pulmonary embolism. You could cause all sorts of heart issues. So it is worth monitoring, but it's not the end all number. Now, in this particular example, I'm going to say, I'm going to guess that your heart rate, especially based on those half marathon times, like I said, that marathon time theoretically would be a little bit faster. It does depend on your running economy or efficiency. And usually people with really good efficiency and running economy as marathon runners, uh, they could get very close to their half marathon time for, for the full 42K or 26.2 miles. And they usually, if they have really good efficiency and running economy, that means you could usually pull a higher percentage of your maximum heart rate for the marathon. For example, a lot of people might do a marathon at maybe averaging 80% of their maximum heart rate, right? Pretty good effort, right? It's under the lactate threshold. It's, you know, it's over 80%, it's around 80%. That's probably more of a, a normal type of number for the whole average of a marathon, be it a 230 or a three hour or a four hour marathon, right? But their efficiency might not be dialed because they don't have a big enough base. They haven't run super high mileage. Maybe genetically they have more fast twitch muscle fibers. So if, if they train that efficiency and improve it though, maybe later on they could end up running a marathon at 85 or 88 percent, probably not 88 percent, but you know, 85 percent of their maximum heart rate. Now their maximum heart rate didn't change 
A lot of times it doesn't change. A lot of times it should go down as you get older. That's not always the case though. There's huge variation in individual max heart rate numbers. So one person's 160 might be their max. Another person, it might be 210. They might both be 40 year old males. Uh, it really is genetic and it really depends on a lot of factors. Um, but if you could race at a higher percentage of your max heart rate for a long distance race, then theoretically you are just running faster. You're developing more power. You're getting closer to your potential limit. And I believe most runners uh, don't even get close to their limits. A lot of times it's because you don't have the time to train like a full-time pro, like a Kipchoge. Uh, he says no human is limited, but <laughs> I digress there. Um, yeah, most people can improve substantially with better training, the, all the attention to detail, as long as you stay healthy and you don't get hurt, uh, and if, you, if you're a certain chronological age. Uh, a lot of people out there, you guys are rock stars, you're improving, you may be in your 50s or 60s, uh, but generally if you've been training for a really long time like me, you're going to be peaking out probably in your late 30s. Uh, that's the hard reality of it, but I've been running 100 miles a week since I was 20 years old. Um, so. In this case, though, uh, you know, the marathon time could come down, but I don't think uh, you are necessarily racing the full marathon at 92% of your max heart rate. I think the number you get for your max heart rate, it's very hard to get the 100% max heart rate value. Uh, you have to basically do a VO2 max test in the lab. I was surprised, and I'll, again, personal story, N equals 1, not a good sample size, but from what I've learned looking at exercise physiology text, working with coaches and athletes over the years, heart rate straps are very prone to error, but also people are prone to not being able to pull out 100% max heart rate. So if you're working off only 97 or 95% of your max heart rate, maybe your max heart rate number is actually higher and you could surprise yourself doing a real VO2 max test. So I trained with heart rate for years. Uh, not, I don't limit myself for the heart rate, but I'll be doing like a hard session of like repeat kilometers on a track via two max workout or i'll do you know some high intensity hill repeats two to three minutes four minute hill repeats you could start spiking heart rate pretty high and i found that over the years i knew okay i'm going really hard i'm going all out on this last rep last kilometer you know boom last three minute hill rep boom as hard as i could go i'm hitting you know maybe high 170s on the heart rate this was like three or four years ago and I was like, well, my max must be around 180. Well, I actually go to a lab and get a real VO2 max test done, very progressive. The heart rate strap was dialed in, it was working well. VO2 max test will run you to 100% of the max heart rate. If you are very mentally tough, you have to be very mentally tough. It's very, very stressful. Uh, basically like racing all out for eight minutes. Uh, so within three or four minutes though, and this test, it, you know, it increases one mile per hour every minute. It increases the incline uh, about half a percent grade or it was 1% grade increase every minute. So every minute the treadmill starts, I'm starting running at like six minute mile pace on a flat, but then it's going up to 1% grade and it's going up to 6.5 miles per hour. Uh, then it's going up another. So it's progressive in nature. That's usually the best way to do VO2 max tests, especially if you're a runner, you need to be running on a treadmill, not on a stationary bike or using a, a hand cycle. Uh, those are, I, I'm always surprised when scientific studies use that to estimate VO2 max. It's not going to be accurate. Your muscles are going to poop out on you if you're not used to cycling, if you're a runner, right? So progressive VO2 max test, very important lab controlled studies. I was hitting 170s within three or four minutes. By the time I got to you know six, seven, eight minutes, you're getting, I'm getting close to VO2 max. And I'm surprised because my heart rate as, was higher than I'd ever seen in training. I was able to get into the 180s, uh, which is very high for me. Maybe it's not high for you. <laughs> uh, and I, then I realized, okay, I'm at VO2 max. Uh, I start leveling off. You actually can't, you could keep going for minutes at a time. It's, it's quite painful. You mentally have to dig very hard like you're in an all out race. Um, and then I realized, Hey, you know what? My 100% max heart rate is actually a lot higher than what I've ever achieved in training. And maybe I was just being a wuss in my, my VO2 max workouts, but that just goes to show that unless you have a real VO2 max test and it's very controlled, it's very hard to hit hundred percent uh, max heart rate. So therefore, if you're estimating what 90% or 92% of your max heart rate is, and you don't have the real number for 100%, you're probably not at 92%, maybe you're at a lower percentage of your max heart rate. And I would be very surprised if uh, someone was able to hold 92% of their max heart rate for an entire marathon, especially 
when you're running 240. That's two hours and 40 minutes at 92% of max heart rate. Not really physically possible, I'd say, for most people. Very well-trained elites, maybe the Kipchogis of the world out there, might be able to do it. Uh, but generally, most people are going to be over their lactate threshold at uh, 92% max heart rate. And that means they're going to accumulate lactic acid uh, too quickly, basically, and things are going to start shutting down and you're going to be breathing really hard. Most people can't even hold that for a, a half marathon. So, you know, if you're looking at running a 116 half marathon, uh, you can't even hold lactate threshold. Most people, the, the 60 minute, if you raced an all out 60 minute or one hour effort, most people that's between 10K and half marathon distance, uh, then you could hold lactate threshold. And usually lactate threshold is not even 90%. Of maximum heart rate for most people. So I would reevaluate uh, what you, your max heart rate may actually be. I could be wrong. Again, I don't want to sell uh, this individual short. Those are really fast, uh, fantastic times. And uh, yeah, just be wary that heart rate monitors aren't the end all. I don't always go by heart rate. As much as we like to preach easy days easy, I actually like to advocate more now breathing rate and how well you're able to talk because your, your ventilatory threshold, your breathing, uh, you know, that's related to the intensity and keeping things at a low intensity to build aerobic base is important for injury prevention, uh, but also for building good form and building those aerobic pathways in terms of, of fat burning, fat utilization, but also developing the capillary beds, the mitochondria, all these things at the cellular level. Uh, I don't want to get too into the exercise science there, but Generally, the lower intensity training is good for the vast majority of your training. Of course, you need some speed training, VO2 max training, economy or efficiency training, could even be hill sprints for a distance runner to help give you that extra edge, stimulate the fast switch muscle fibers, stuff like that. Um, but generally, yeah, I wouldn't be a slave to the heart rate numbers because if the data is bad, if you don't know your 100% max, you're working at percentages that aren't even valid. And that's my whole argument uh, with the MOTH method, uh, using arbitrary formulas, subtracting 180 minus your age, or using certain thresholds. Uh, they're just estimates at best. Even some of the technology we see uh, using algorithms, it's, it's estimating. And I don't like estimates, I like real data. So real in the field data, Going by feel is good because training is an art and a science and being able to know your relative paces on flat uniform surfaces in good conditions is also important. But also if you pass the talk test, uh, you could kind of tell your thresholds and you learn that through time as well as real data points, real all out race performances where we could say, okay, if you've run this for the half, this may be your potential in a full. And I think for this runner, uh, they could certainly crack 240 eventually, um, but it all depends. So thanks for tuning in. Submit questions for next week's training talk topic uh, for next week and vote up comments that you like as well. You could vote up your own. That'll catch my attention and be the question I answer next week. Again, check out our training plans at higherrunning.com. We sell training plans for any service, any distance. Coach Sandy and I uh, just released our ultimate running course, Learn How to Coach Yourself. So you can check that out on our website. Follow Sandy at Running Wild, Sandy Nightpaver. Uh, thank you so much for your support. Shout out to title sponsor Hoka, keeping the dream alive, as well as all you Patreon supporters, keeping this channel alive. Hope you're doing well and stay tuned for more via 2 Max Productions.